Do a report out on one of our top allies, and uh, it doesn't look good. Saudi Arabia, uh, Arabia gave military weapons shipped from U.S. to Al-Qaeda. Saudi Arabia and its coalition gave Al-Qaeda, Salafi militias, and other factions in Yemen weapons that were produced by the United States, CNN reported Monday. They were the ones who broke the story, but they're not... They're not talking about it endlessly on air, as they should. The weapons have also reportedly been captured by Iranian-backed rebel, rebel groups fighting the coalition in Yemen, meaning they may be reverse-engineered for intelligence. A Department of Defense official confirmed to CNN that the U.S. is investigating the issue as transferring military equipment to a third party would violate U.S.-Saudi coalition arms agreements. Local commanders and analysts told CNN during its investigation that the Saudis and the United Arab Emirates use weapons given to them by the U.S. as currency to buy off factions and militias in the Yemen conflict. In the aftermath of the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Saudi embassy in Istanbul, the U.S.'s role in, Saudi -led, in the Saudi-led war in Yemen has been under increased scrutiny. In other words, credit to Ro Khanna and to Bernie Sanders, who really led the charge on that front and said... Listen, we have to stop supporting this genocide that Yem that uh, Saudi Arabia is carrying out in Yemen. But the angle of the story that's getting more coverage is, in, oh, our weapons may have fallen into Iranian-backed militias' hands. So, listen, here's the slightly conspiratorial part of this that you're not allowed to say, but I'm going to say it. When we give weapons and money to Saudi Arabia, we know where some of it is going to end up. And I say that because it's been like that since the fucking 1980s. So, when Ronald Reagan armed and funded the Mujahideen in Afghanistan to fight the Soviet Union, he knew who they were. He knew that these are fundamentalist Muslims. And later on, they broke up and became Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. So we armed our worst enemies. In fact, we armed Osama bin Laden. There were articles in The Independent, a British paper, describing him as a freedom fighter. The Taliban literally, uh, representatives of the Taliban from the Mujahideen went to the White House and met with Reagan. So we know what ends up happening when we arm these characters. And fast forward to today, we still do it. We've done it in regards to Syria. Because in Syria, 60% of the rebels fighting Assad are jihadists. Um, and we've also done it in Yemen. We, when we arm and fund Saudi Arabia, we know that they're going to utilize um, Sunni militias on the ground. And the Sunni militias on the ground, overwhelmingly, are jihadists. And, you know, they're fighting the Houthi militias, which are the allegedly Iranian-backed militias, because they're Shia militias. And now our weapons got into their hands as well. So in other words... We appear to be arming both sides of multiple conflicts. And this is... The military-industrial complex loves this because they make a lot of money when they keep selling these weapons. And everybody else hates it. So, honestly, this all goes back to... The way to fix this, this all goes back to a Jill Stein policy, which everybody laughed her out of the room when she said it, but she was totally right. We have to stop arming human rights violators. If we immediately cut off all arms deals with human rights violators, that includes Saudi Arabia, that includes various rebel groups, that includes Egypt, that includes Israel, if we cut off arms going to human rights violators, you would immediately see a, immediately see a drastic decrease in um, the amount of terrorism happening around the world because they no longer have the arms to do it. And that, even if somebody steps in and fills that vacuum, they're not going to fill the entire vacuum because we fund, we give so many arms to so many bad actors around the world that nobody can fill that vacuum if we step out of that vacuum. So you're just going to have a decrease in terrorism if we stop arming human rights violators. Now, that's such a simple approach to fixing this. And again, Jill Stein was left out of the room for saying it, but it's totally true. If we just didn't arm Saudi Arabia, how many more people would be alive today? Even if, they, again, even if they go to other powers and, you know, make up the difference and get some weapons from other powers, there's no way they'd give, they'd get as big of a weapons deal from other powers as they've gotten from us. So, this is a devastating story, and it's already out of the news.
and it ain't going to get back in the news. And instead, all of the anger that you see in mainstream outlets is going to be directed at the likes of Tulsi Gabbard for not saying enough bad words about Assad. But the anger for our for the establishment for selling weapons to Al Qaeda, mum's the word. <laughs> there won't be international pressure to stop the U.S. from selling weapons to Saudi Arabia anymore, even though we see the results of this, and it's going to come back to bite us in the ass like it does every single time. Um, it turns out human rights are not the concern. The military-industrial complex churns on. 